Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, I'm ASD, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can block the light coming from the pop-up flash while using it to trigger an off-camera flash that is set on a slave mode. So if you're interested, keep on watching. When working with flashes, it's preferable to use the flash off-camera for many reasons, which I may get into in another video. Many flashes and speed lights can be controlled remotely with a trigger, but the cheaper flashes usually don't have that feature and the only way you can use them off camera is by setting them on a slave mode. When you set up a flash on a slave mode, that means that this flash is going to be waiting for another flash that is nearby to fire first and it will only fire after. So you have your main or master flash that fires first and the flash on the slave mode is the one that fires right after. You can use your camera built-in or pop-up flash as a master flash to give the signal to the one on slave mode, but this way you are using two flashes. In a small space where you have those two flashes close to the subject that you are photographing, you probably wouldn't need that much light. You may want to limit things just to using the off-camera flash, which can be controlled. You can change the intensity of the light of the off-camera flash, but you can't change the intensity of the light of the pop-up flash. So, you may feel that you don't really need it there at all, but how do you block the light coming from it and still use it to trigger the flash that is on a slave mode? If you are facing this challenge, it probably means that for whatever reason, getting a more expensive equipment that can be controlled remotely isn't an option for you right now, otherwise you would have done so in the first place. And this is absolutely fine, you don't always have to rely on expensive gear. I believe that a good photographer is the one that is able to adjust and work with any equipment under any circumstances. Now, the best thing about the pop-up flash is that it's tiny. So what I started doing several years ago, and I'm sure that many other photographers have done this before me, and many others will probably keep doing it after me, but what I figure out to do is to just cut out a tiny piece of black PVC electrical tape. Yeah, I do use this black tape for so many things. So I cut out a piece, a tiny piece, and I put it on top of my pop-up flash. It's very important not to cover the entire pop-up flash because the black tape is pretty thick so there is no light coming through the covered area. And if I cover up the whole flash, then the flash that is on the slave mode just won't fire. Depending on the size and shape of your pop-up flash, you may need to cut out a bigger or smaller piece, but yeah, obviously you need to have a piece that covers most of it. Now, what I usually do is I leave about one millimeter uncovered. And it works fine because this way there is a very tiny bit of light coming through, enough to trigger the flash that is on the slave mode, but still not enough to affect my scene in any way. Most of the light is blocked by the black tape. The first photo is when I have the tape on and I have blocked most of the light coming from the pop-up flash and my subject is being illuminated mostly by the off-camera flash and a bit of ambient light. The second photo is where I have removed the tape and my subject is being illuminated by the pop-up flash, by the off-camera flash and by a tiny bit of ambient light. Here is the side-by-side -side comparison of the two photos. And that is my little workaround. I only do this when I'm forced by circumstances, when I work in such situations. Obviously, it is a lot better to have flashes that can be controlled remotely. Things are a lot easier this way. But, you know, if you don't have things all lined up and you don't have the best equipment available, that doesn't mean you should stop working and you should just give up and do nothing about it. No, there are ways to work around it. And I don't like letting minor things like that prevent me from achieving the results that I want to achieve. So I just wanted to share that with you. I hope that you find that video interesting, maybe useful, practical. You can have a look at the rest of my videos. They're all photography related. I do have some other DIYs. I do have videos on macro. I have behind the scenes videos. I have a lot. Just have a look at my videos. And if you like them, subscribe to my channel, like this video. You can have a look at my blog where I share a lot more information. Thank you so much for watching this video and I do hope to see you next time. Bye for now.